we can invent our very own way of life and have that um, mark the Australian continent. And that is what we have done with suburbia. And in fact, in all of the data sets, in all of the years, from all of the censuses that I've looked at uh, and data sources that I've looked at for Australia throughout my career, I've come to the conclusion uh, later in life, you know, maybe the last five years or so, that there is a single common denominator that, that connects Australians. And you can see it, once it's been pointed out to you, you can see it in almost every single data set. And that is an obsession with lifestyle. Now, predominantly, this is expressed through suburbia, but there are other iterations as well. But the vast bulk of Australians pursue this, this lifestyle through suburbia. It's very important to our culture. I've been tracking the proportion of Australians working from home for 25 years. In 1996, 5% of the workforce worked from home. And... Um, this was, uh, I don't know, pre-dial up and I don't know, one, two, three, four G or so, whatever it was uh, over that time frame um, over the last 25 years. It has not changed. It was the same proportion in the 2016 census. Along comes the coronavirus and I think 45% of workers work from home. I would think that in Canberra, that was even higher because there's so many more office workers. I think it will go back to 10% or 15%. Every five percentage point uplift off the 5% base takes 600,000 commuters out of the daily commute to and from work. And if it's 15%, as I think it could well be, that is 1.2 million commuters coming out of the daily commute. And you start to have a very powerful shift in the way Australians live and work and orientate in their city. Um, I've referred to this as the home is shifting from a third place to a first place. Town planners and placemakers love to use the phrase um, a third place. So there's home, there's work. And then over the last 20, 30 years, there's been the evolution of this third place, the cafe, the restaurant, you know, the South Bank precinct, the Darling Harbour precinct, all of those sorts of things where you hung out and lived. Uh, you weren't at home, you weren't at work. There was this third place. Well, I think we're actually going to see people living at home, working at home, studying at home, being entertained at home, shopping at home. Uh, the first place is going to be um, reinforced in the decade ahead, I think. And that mightily changes the home. It mightily changes suburbia. Uh, let's look at the way in which our cities are changing, our really, really big cities. Um, and I would buy, say this would apply to Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane and Perth, less so to Adelaide and not to Canberra. I'll get to Canberra in just a moment. Um, our biggest four cities are a bit like fried eggs. For 180 years or more, they've evolved in the fried egg model. But you have the rich creamy yolk where all the cool jobs are, the knowledge workers live, the hipsters live, and you, that's surrounded by the goat's cheese curtain about five kilometers out from the CBD. And then you have the broad flat egg white of suburbia spreading in every direction. And the idea for 180 years is to invent trams, trains and automobiles to get the workers from the edge to the cool jobs in the centre of town and then back out again. So progressively, you know, you get to the uh, 21st century and you have people living in Cranbourne in Melbourne, Penrith in Sydney and Caboolture in Brisbane and commuting an hour on the train in the morning and an hour on the train at night. Now I reckon baby boomers, you know, kind of, do that, maybe resentfully, but they'll do it. I don't think millennials are going to do that for 30 plus years. They will think of a better way. And I reckon here is it. Here it is. And it's the Canberra model when you look at it. What I think is happening with the work from home movement is people um, living at home, working at home, being entertained at home, studying at home, go to local cafes, go to local shops, go to a local park. This is by default the rise of the 20-minute city. This is the Belconnen, the Tugranong, the Gungahlin, the Philip, the Woden, the Western Creek model that is being superimposed, if you like, implanted over our biggest cities because it's simply a better model. Why would you commute from Glen Waverley or from Cranbourne on the edge of Melbourne into the city centre and out again when you work from home? You wouldn't. You might work from home, you might work near home in a collaboration space in somewhere like a Dandenong or a Chadston or something like that. Or you might just up and off to a sea change or tree change town. 
In fact, this flee the city movement, I think, is underway as we speak. I think that this is the way Australians will increasingly move uh, over the next 10 years or so. And really, Canberra was planned and designed by Walter Burley Griffin, Griffin uh, on, on this logic. But I think what we will see in the post-corona world is that 1943 to 1946 downshift where we're so relieved that we have come out of this well. And in comparison to America, in comparison to Europe, we will say that we have done particularly well and will just want to get on with life. The comfort, the security, the convenience of suburbia fills that that market, if you like. That is what I think we will see. Australians um, have always had this obsession with lifestyle and we express it. This is why I say the space, the security, the salubrity of the suburbs means that it's the suburbs time in the sun. Thank you very much.